Agani Kora and Gate Al Chias Firkin Fulcher of Galer, Agasahasaram an Iraq special to Rinishiv Tiakadi. Well, in our era, Countess Nahokojis Tovati Dern with in our Sultronam Hanix Binis Mehin An Margurt Me, on him up Tavak Tuksha, a Tashimir quit a fiak to span an ash on the heap of Shia Kilure, Agas Conroll Navar, Igor Kuntin, Cartan Aman Ahent, Agas Kohorehe, a roll in Yere, a car, Dere a car, Le Furegel Inchkne. Dear friends, you are all absolutely welcome to Oris and Uktron, and Sabina and I are very pleased that you are joining us this morning for what we think is one of the most important events we have organised in Oris and Uktron since my inauguration. It is to mark United Nations Women's He for She campaign and to celebrate the role of men in advancing women's rights in general in the fullest sense and in particular in combating gender-based violence. Earlier this week, I participated in a ceremony celebrating the role of women in the rising of 1916. And in the foundation of our state, that event gave all of us an opportunity, cause to reflect on the experience of women in Ireland over the hundred years that followed. I spoke of how the hopes and aspirations for an equal Ireland for women and men, which are so clearly articulated in the 1916 proclamation, were frustrated, were denied, were blocked for the greater part of the 20th century. The women of 1916 were feminists, many of them of the most radical disposition, but the true republic for which they fought has still not yet been fully achieved and will not be realised until we have full equality for all our citizens. And my message to that event last Tuesday was that as we commemorate the courage and the idealism of those revolutionary women from the founding moments of our state, we must be inspired to do everything we can to complete the journey towards the full enjoyment of women's rights. Now, the equal republic, we all know, is incomplete. But we do have some causes for optimism for both here in Ireland and at global level. Some progress has been made. In Ireland, access to education, access to employment, participation and representation in political life, equality of pay, there are areas in which progress has been substantial and where equality can now be considered, I believe, with all our efforts to be within our grasp. It was in that spirit of optimism, if you like, that I accepted in February 2015 an invitation from the United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Director for United Nations Women for Mizila Malamba Nguka to become a champion of the He for She campaign. This global campaign to which some of us heads of state have affiliated, is one that has the engagement of men and boys at its core. It seeks to bring one half of humanity together in support of the other half of our human family. It seeks to engage institutions and organisations that are in a position to influence change within communities, and particularly those settings where women are most vulnerable to gender inequality and discrimination. For example, uh, I have uh, read with the greatest interest a wonderful speech that one of my predecessors, Mary Robinson, gave only a week or two ago in Brussels about how vulnerable women are among those who are refugees at the moment from Syria and are on the borders of Europe, and their particular vulnerabilities because they are pregnant, they outnumber men, they are having children, and there are so many different ways. Even the most basic facilities are deprived of them. So these issues are with us. I said in taking up this role, as I said, along with other heads of state and heads of government, I committed to try to use my inf- the influence of my office to convey a simple but essential message that men must stand up and show leadership if women's rights are to be fully achieved. 
and a change in consciousness, in behavior, in decision-making, institutional structures is necessary. Of course, throughout our public life, Sabina and I have been involved in many campaigns for equality. The areas of labor, welfare, housing, education, and in relation to fertility and private life. And we remember them all. Over those many years we've spent working on those issues, it has always been clear to us that women's rights and equality is a political project in which men should have as great an interest and as onerous a duty and obligation as women. All of society, I suggest, loses when you have gender inequality, and all of society is flawed if gender violence is allowed to occur, is tolerated, and if an intolerable silence prevails around this grave issue. And then, too, I must emphasise no invocation of cultural difference of tradition or circumstance can ever be accepted as an excuse for gender violence or exclusion. So ours is a moment of great significance in that by initiating the He for She campaign, the United Nations has provided a focal point for an international campaign that will harness the efforts of men and women working together for equality. And thus He for She provides a framework for individuals, institutions, corporations, and civil society to direct their efforts at areas that have been identified as one of priority concern. Some of immediate urgency, I've mentioned refugees, and particularly women refugees, but education, health, identity, work, politics, and violence in any form. So the He for She campaign identifies actions that can be taken by all of us to contribute to change. It presents a unique opportunity to realize the dream of a truly equal world in which the relationships between the genders is one of mutual support, equality, respect, and dare I say love. A defining change in how the international community addresses issues of equality can be seen in the way women's rights are now conceptualised as a universal human rights issue. That is recognised not just in the He for She campaign, but in the Sustainable Development Goals that were agreed in New York last September. Those 17 sustainable those goals, the Sustainable Development Goals and its related 169 targets were adopted by the largest gathering of world governments in history. They now have to be brought to achievement. They are universal objectives for all nations, rich and poor, developed and undeveloped, and they provide a pathway to addressing complex questions of distribution of wealth, and resources over the medium term, distribution within countries as well as between countries. And you know, we should be sophisticated and honest enough to realise now, equal societies are healthier societies. Unequal societies are the cause of so much sickness of a social, personal and institutional kind. But we must all rejoice at the fact that gender equality was tackled in New York as a transversal issue and as a very specific goal. Goal number five, which calls on the nations of the world, I quote, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Within this goal number five, there is a specific target aimed at gender violence and it is phrased as follows. Eliminate all forms of violence against all women and girls in public and private spheres, including trafficking and sexual and other types of exploitation. So the Sustainable Development Goals are aimed at the medium term, the aspiration being to end gender-based violence within 15 years. I spoke about this in New York, and I repeat what I said then. While we must all welcome the fact that women's rights are recognised as a central question of development throughout the agreed text, we should, however, be animated by an even greater sense of urgency when tackling the issues facing women globally. 
We must give leadership as citizens of a republic. We shouldn't have to wait 15 years. Indeed, given what we know, what we understand about the causes and consequences of such violence, such violation of human rights, and given the resources and expertise available to us, as well as the strong public support that exists in Ireland for this work, we can say unambiguously that 15 years is far too long to wait for equality, and that even a day is too long to end gender-based violence in our country or anywhere else in the world for that matter. That is why I'm so pleased that in hosting this event today, we also have the opportunity of partnering with Safe Ireland and their Man Up campaign, which exemplifies the spirit of he for she in calling on men to stand up and play their part in ending gender-based violence. So we're delighted to have with us today not only Sharon O'Halloran as Chief Executive of Safe Ireland and the members and partners of Safe Ireland, but also Ryan Tubretty, I'm so delighted to welcome, representing the male champions who've stood up and confronted prejudice, stereotypes and stigma by declaring their commitment to man up in the face of gender-based violence. The great importance of he for she and man up lies in their recognition that the change we wish for cannot be achieved simply by laws, policies or funding. Social change is necessary and that is based on a change of consciousness that will change behaviour. One step in achieving that change is the building of an environment where men feel comfortable and empowered to identify themselves as feminists and as champions for women's rights. In standing up to be counted in this respect and in using, I have to say, his public profiles, this message, Ryan Tabretti and others have shown great leadership and courage. And that's wonderful, and I salute it. We are also honoured to have male leaders from large national organisations who are willing to show that similar leadership and are willing to advocate the messages of he for she and man up. I'm so pleased that they're willing to promote this among their members. We welcome today Jerry Collins from IPEC, David Joyce from ICTU, John Delaney from the Football Association of Ireland, Kevin Donoghue from the Union of Students in Ireland, Aintas the Mark Lennon Erin, and Vice Admiral Mark Mellet from the Defence Forces. So, Agus Muita Dolomun and Fiak the Shaw, Kun Ahre Kara Greek, Taroda Wanathonis Kork, Dina, Fakal na Policy, Nas Luan, Agus na Poster, Agus a Shin non Kyol. Data Ro, Garfi Rieke Le Shal, Lien and Talk and Lave Yokan on our own Fiak the Shaw. Eitra nach will on grilg koli for san aka, may I say in English, finally when embarking on a campaign for change, there's something in Ireland that is always more powerful than words, policies, slogans or posters. And that is music. You might even argue that this was proven by the renaissance of the campaign song as a feature of the recent election. So it is a great gift to have the power to communicate ideas through the medium of melody and sound. May I, on your behalf and on my own, congratulate Andrew Hosier for choosing to lend the power of his musical gift to this important cause. Through his song, Cherry Wine, and his video collaboration with Sir Sharonan, he's bringing the message of today's events to a wider audience. And that is a great, great source of satisfaction to us all. And I know to all of you, and he has given so generously of his time. He's with us here this morning, and we look forward to hearing him perform later. He for she and the Man Up campaign are important, valuable tools and platforms that we've been given. And I ask all of you here today to make the fullest use of these tools and platforms. Become a supporter of the He for She campaign through the website and consider all the actions you will think of yourselves that you as individuals and organisations can implement. And similarly, Consider ways in which you or your organisation can become active activists in the Safe Ireland and Man Up campaigns, which are so important. 
And one step, I think, in, in, it, in, in it, one step that I think that is in achieving this is to spread the message as far and as wide as possible in, in as many settings as possible. Is that called Kilure in Lanyu? Lakan Kilure Yan for Federti Agus Kilure Yan for an Kadr of Ider Eras Mana. Kadr of Ata Voon Lak a shoot at all, Marendi Thain, a Gledu Kiana Siakta. Today is a day of celebration, celebration of what is possible, and celebration of a new relationship, a new initiative for relationships between men and women. And it is being forged by yourselves who are sowing such great leadership. And I hope you have all the results of it because future generations will thank us for having taken these steps towards achieving equality in a real republic. Karamila Mahakis Barbana.